this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and this is the first week of our Dear Jane Quilt Along. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm doing, I will link below an introduction video to the quilt along I'm doing this year for Dear Jane Quilt with the Dear Jane add-on to EQ8. Now, if you have the book, I'm sure that you can follow along also if you want to do the quilt. You can hit the subscribe button notification bell if you're curious about this and see how it goes for us this year. But today is our inaugural day for the Dear Jane quilt. And I what I want to do is just start off with showing you how I get around EQ8 and get my blocks printed in the format that I want to put them together, whether it be foundation paper piecing, plain piecing, uh, applique, using templates. Um, I'm going to show you how I am getting to those blocks and getting the pieces that I need to put them together. So for the very first one in January, January 5th, 2024, we are doing blocks E1, F4, G5, K11, and the border block TR-1. I know that may sound weird if you're new here, but these blocks are laid out in a grid. So that grid will tell you exactly where we're going. Um, also, they have very good documentation and PDFs that will tell you exactly what those blocks are. So I am in EQ8 right now. I am in the master file. And what I want to do is go find these blocks that we're going to be working on. I'm not going to do it here. I would have to do a lot of counting and trying to figure it out. What I want to do, and I want to show you where I'm going. I'm going up here to libraries and I'm circling it. You want to go to the block library. And right here in block libraries, these are all the EQ8 blocks. We don't need those. We need the Dear Jane add-on. And right now I want to go to the center blocks. So our very first block is E1. So let's go to Dear Jane Row E. And there is E1. It tells you right down here. And I'm going to circle it. That is E1, called Aunt Exie's Flocks. So what I can do is double click on this, and it shows up right here. Now we're in edit mode. I don't want to be in edit mode. Um, I could color it if I wanted to. This block has a dark background with light petals. I don't know. I actually don't even know which batik I'm going to be using right now, so I'm not going to color it. All these blocks are two colors, so it's not going to be hard to figure out where colors go. So at this point, you can do templates. And those don't look like a lot of fun to put together. <laughs> so I am going to do applique. So if we actually go back to the templates, what we can do is we just need these petal pieces. I can cut one square and then applique these petal pieces on. So we can delete and I'm just highlighting them and deleting these pieces that we don't need. And we actually only need one petal. They're all exactly the same so we only need one petal. So I'm going to delete all the petals so we are down to just this one petal in our um, piece of paper that we need to print. So we can print this. This will be our template per se for our applique. So we can go ahead and print that and that is what it looks like. So we're ready to go on E1. All right, we can close out of this. Let's go back up here to libraries, to block library. We're still in the Dear Jane and we want to go to F4. So let's go to Dear Jane row F4. Let's see, which way do they go? There's F4 right there. We can take a look at this, or we can come down here to center block variations and look at F4 and see if it's any different. It doesn't look much different. I don't think it's going to be a problem. So let's go back to the original one, and I'm going to double click it. It's called Old Windmill. And this one, I want to do as many foundation paper pieces as I can in this. They'll just end up... Um, They'll just end up more square. So I am going to see what the foundation looks like. 
the FPP for this. And you can see the different colors represent different sections. So there's three sections to this. And this is the numbering. So let's preview what this is going to look like when we print it. There's our three sections. And uh, we can get this one printed so that we can make it. And there we go. There it is printed, ready to be made. All right, let's move on to G5. Back up here to libraries, block library, row G. There's G5. So when I was looking at this, I, ha I was having a hard time with the way they wanted me to print the original block. Um, you can check it out if you have it. I want to be able to foundation paper piece the background and then put the little poof as an applique on top. So let's go down here to center block variations, go to row G, and it's variation two that I want. And you can see down here, right to the left of my face, it says G5 proof variation two. So let's double click that. That's what it looks like. It's got the applique here. And then if we go to print and export and go to foundation, you can see it's got the two sections to make the background out of foundation paper piecing. So we can print this. And that's what it looks like when we print it. And there we go. We have it printed and ready to go. And that's just the background. So what we need to do now is close out. Let's go to templates, preview, and you can see that is the template we need for our applique. So let's just delete all the other pieces. And there we go. We can print this page and we've got just the applique template on this page. There we go. There is the applique template. All right, let's go to K11. Go back up here to libraries, block library. Row K, K11, that's 10, so this is 11. That is obviously perfect for foundation paper piecing. So that's what it looks like colored in. We can go to print and export and hit our foundation. And these are all the different sections that we need for this block. Here's the numbering. And if we preview, that's what it's gonna look like when we print it. And oh, there we go, we're ready to make this block. So there's our four center blocks for this week. Now our border block is TR1, which means top row first block. So let's go to back to the block library want to get out of our center blocks, go to our border blocks, and we want top row, which is right here, and this is TR1, and it's called Spanish Moss. So we can open that. That is obviously going to lend itself to foundation. Hit the foundation. You can see the different colors represent the sections. There's the numbering, and if we preview it, we have got this. So what we want to do is you want to grab these pieces and put them on separate pieces of paper so that, let's just space these out, so that we don't have to tape anything together. So let's grab it. Okay, there we go. Space, I bet we can fit all of this on one page. Let's pull that over, and then let's pull this one over. There we go. Let's just push this one up. All right, we can print that out. And that's our border block that we're gonna be doing with foundation paper piecing. And there we go, there is our border block ready to be foundation paper pieced. And like I said, all of these are just two color blocks. So whatever colors you're using, you can coordinate, you can do them randomly. I haven't even picked my colors out yet. So I'm gonna be doing that and then let's go to my sewing machine and put these together. Okay, I went to my batiks and I decided that since I'm doing everything randomly, none of these blocks are together, I'm just gonna do all three or all five of these in blue. So I just pulled out, like I said, randomly pulled some blue teal out of my batiks to get started with. 
So the one I'm going to start with, I'm just going to go in order, is E1, Aunt Exie's Phlox. So what we need to do, I have some Steam Seam 2 here, and I'm going to cut this out on the solid line because that would be the stitch line. I don't want the seam allowance. The solid line, and then I have to transfer that to my Steam Seam 2, and then I can iron these onto my light color and they'll be ready to applique. Let's do this one. This one looks pretty. Onto my blue. So I need to get a five inch square of this so that I can get these ready to go onto here. And that's all we have to do until we applique. You know, I have to decide if I want to do like a blanket stitch or if I want to do raw edge applique. I still haven't decided that either. At that time, when I get to the machine, I will decide that. So I am going to give myself a square of my blue. And I'm going to get my templates ready. For our first block, E1 Aunt Exie's Phlox, I have my background piece, which is five inches square because we want it to be four and a half inches unfinished. I took the template that I printed right here and I marked it on the grid side of my Steam Seam 2. And I also cut a piece of my light color. I'm I would call it my background, but in this case, it's gonna be foreground. Big enough to fit the webbing. So let's pull it off. All right, let's stick it down. The glue is on the back of this. And I'm gonna press this for about three seconds. That adheres it onto this so that I can. It actually transfers the glue, but it doesn't actually glue it down. So I'm going to cut my templates out. Okay, here's my pieces ready to be stuck on. And what I want to do is find the center of this. So let's finger press this. Fold it in quarters. Let's really press that center. All right, so now that I have the center, I can now peel off the back of these and the glue is on my fabric and I'm gonna put the point in the center and then have the point go towards the corner. And there we go. I will press this down for about 10 seconds and uh, this block will be ready to applique and we are done with this one. All right, so. Next is F4 Old Windmill. This is a foundation paper piece. Three different sections. I need three white pieces that are the same size. And when I measure it, it's basically one by two. So I made a three by two piece. And you can see that it's got plenty of coverage. So I need four of those. The next thing I need are these big triangles. And I kind of went in here and was like, hmm, if I did one big square and cut it in on the diagonal both ways, I should be able to get what I need. And right there's the center of this six inch block. So I think if I cut a six inch piece, I'm going to be doing pretty good. There will be plenty there. In fact, I probably don't even need six, but I may end up with small enough pieces to do these sides. So let's just do a six inch square. I've got plenty of material. Let's cut it on the diagonal. Remember, it does it's paper piecing, and these are going to be plenty of big, so it doesn't need to be perfect. All right, yep, those are going to be plenty big. So I've got those. I'm going to start putting this together and see what I have left over from this, and they may fit these small pieces. So let's get started. Actually, I need a square for A, and that's a one inch by one inch square. So let's do a two inch square. And again, it's paper piecing, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Let's see, on my board here, two inches. There we go. And we start with that. A1, A2, I still need an A3. Hmm. I bet a two inch, I bet a two inch square cut on the diagonal would work. 
let's just try it. I got plenty of fabric here. So this is kind of how I go through when I'm paper piecing and I don't have anything that tells me the sizes I need. So let's cut a two inch. Let's cut it on the diagonal. All right, let's put this together, see how it goes. All right, so need to go to the back, go to A1. Oh, I should have done this on newspaper print. Oh, well. Let's put it about a quarter of an inch over the line. We'll lay this on top. This is our second piece. And I'm gonna sew on this line. D don't forget to put your stitch length at really small. I put mine at 1.5 and it's normally 2.2. There we go. And I'm gonna iron it towards the top piece, the A2 piece. All right, turn it back over. Let's go to A3. Fold on that line between A2 and A3. Trim a quarter of an inch. Let's take one of our two inch squares cut on the diagonal and we'll put it right up here. And we're gonna sew on this line. And we're gonna iron towards the A3 piece. All right, I am going to repeat for A4 and A5. All right, I cut another two inch square, cut it on the diagonal, getting ready for these two small pieces. Here's my A put together. I will trim everything at the end. So B1 is a triangle. So let's turn it over. And B2 is the white piece, so we want to make sure we have coverage on all our lines, and we definitely do. Put it a quarter of an inch over top of everything. And then put this on so it covers all our lines. I know you can't see it, but I have coverage. Now I'm going to sew from here to all the way across this line right here. There we go. Now I'm going to iron towards my B2 piece. One thing I want to mention when I paper piece, when I get to the seam line right here and here, every time I come to a corner of a seam line, I do a lock stitch or you can do a back stitch. These pieces are going to be sitting here. These blocks are going to be sitting for a year and I don't want them to start unraveling. So I always do a lock stitch where seams meet or even like here in the corners. I'll do a lock stitch. All right, now we want to go between B2 and oops, B3 is up here. I guess it doesn't matter. And cut this off at our quarter inch. Add our triangle we cut and sew it on the line. All right, I've got that piece on, our corner piece. Now we go between B2 and B4. Fold it. Trim it. And make sure we get this piece on correctly. It's gonna go like that. So we'll flip it over so it's like right sides together. Line it up with our cut seam and sew on the line. All right, so there's our B section. I am going to construct C because it's exactly the same as B and then we'll come put our block together. All right, here's my three sections finished. Now what I wanna do is trim up my sections. What I like to do is take my ruler I want to cut on this outer line. I don't want to cut on here, that's my seam line. Cut on the outer line, and I like to take my ruler and put the quarter inch right on the seam line. And it should equal the line that I have on there, but just in case. And I'm gonna do that all the way around my block. Put the quarter inch on my seam line and then trim it up. And if you want, you can trim these little parts if you're using EQ8 printout. And that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna get the others trimmed up too. Okay, there's my three sections. Um, it's gonna kinda be like any block. We are gonna 
put our sections together. And the way the EQ8 numbered them, these seams, this seam right here is nesting. So I'm going to nest those seams. I am going to clip this in place and sew along this solid line. All right, there's our first side put on and I decided to iron it open. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to line up those seams and it's going to nest right there. So I'm going to get those two nested and then clip it in place and sew it. All right, there's my F4 old windmill. I'm just going to leave the paper on. I'm not going to pull it off till the end. Hopefully it keeps it nice and square without stretching. All right, next is our G5 poof variation number two. This is going to be a combination of paper piecing the background and appliquing the poof on the top. So I've got myself a light steam seam two big enough to so I can put my poof applique on it. I've gone ahead and measured these triangles here, which are going to be my blue. And six inch square, again, just like the last one, will be plenty. So I cut a six inch square and then cut it on both diagonals. So I get four of these triangles. And then these white strips here, one and a half inches is plenty to cover it. And then this, these two, I figured I needed four inches. And then this long one, I need an eight inch piece. So I've got my two fours and my eight. So we are ready to go for our paper piece. So that's what I'm gonna do first. And then I'm gonna come back and get the applique ready. All right, here's our two sections for G5 variation two called poof. This is our A section, so we need triangle, a rectangle, and a triangle. And we're going to put them on just like that. Same thing over here for B, um, the B section, except when we're done with these three pieces, we will add our long piece here to the end of it. So I'm going to get these done and then we'll come back and we will put them together and do our applique. All right, there's my two sections finished. So now we're just going to put them together. You can do it several ways. You can match these notched edges or I'm lining up the seams right here, which lines up my notched edges. So I'm going to pin this together and we're going to sew on that solid line and iron it open. All right, there's my background. I've ironed the seam open. So what I need to do is prepare for the applique. I'm going to take my poof template and I transferred it over to my steam seam. I've got my piece of fabric. I'm going to peel it off, stick it to my fabric, and I'm going to iron this for about three seconds so we can get that glue adhered onto the fabric. And then we want to cut our template, our applique out. All right, now I can peel the paper off the fabric. Make sure the glue is on your fabric, and it is. I am just going to center mine. That looks good to me, so I am going to press this for about 10 seconds. And that is my G5 Variation 2 Poof. Saving the paper. And at some point I'll come back and figure out how I'm going to applique these. All right, here's K11 Columbine. So these centers right here may be a little bit more difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together the middle here because it's almost exactly like the other two we did. So there's, I've got two and a half inch, I've got a two and a half inch square that I'm going to cut on the diagonal for these pieces, these triangles. And then four one and a half inch by two and a half inches for all of these here. And then a one and a half inch square for the center. So I'm going to get that done. Then I'll come back and we'll address these outer pieces. All right, there's the center section of our K11 Columbine. 
Uh, it's just like putting the other blocks that we did together. For these triangles, I did two and a half inch squares cut on the diagonal, and then one and a half by two and a half inch for these strips right here, and then a one and a half inch square in the middle. So now we have to do these outer borders here for this block. So I have, here they are, for these corners here and this big one. Let's start with that one. Let's just do a big one because the little one will be exactly the same. I have two inch squares for my corners and then I took two inch squares and cut them on the diagonal for this one. And then I cut two and a half by two inch for these here. Let's put B1 and B2 together and then we'll see how we can get B3 on there. All right, B1 is one of these triangles. I'm gonna put it over here so it has coverage. And I'm gonna take a two and a half inch, oh, B2's over here, okay. I can see, okay, B2, I'm gonna take one of these I'm going to line it up over here. I'm just going to fold it over make sure I have coverage. I do. I have coverage all the way around. Okay. So this one will be easier than I think the next one, but we'll see. All right. You want to sew from this point here all the way through. And I'm lock stitching at all my intersections. All right, we have B1 and B2 on and we have coverage all the way around B2. So let's go to B3, get it trimmed up. Now we have one of these two and a half inchers. Fold it. And I do have coverage, all right. So I do have the two and a half inch side right here on the edge of my cut. All right, so two and a half by two inch does work for these two pieces right here with the two and a half inch line always being against the seam. All right, I wasn't sure if that was gonna work. Yeah, the next one is easy. Putting the square on. We'll trim it up. Grab one of our squares. Sew it on. I'm going to do the same thing for this square over here. All right, there's our first outer border of this block. And my pieces worked great, so I am just going to do the exact same thing for these three remaining pieces. We'll get them trimmed up and add them to this center piece. Okay, I finished up the outer rows, whatever you want to call them, for this K11 block. So to put that together, we want to have these little blue triangles on the outside. That's how the block looks. So we just need to put these together in rows. I'm going to match these up and this, I'm gonna iron towards the inside um, block here so we will have nested seams. All right, there we go. I've ironed towards this inside block so that when we put these together, our seams will nest right here. Beautiful. And let's, uh, let's iron this towards the top row. Well, that is a stunning little block. Gorgeous. All right, time for one of our border blocks, which is gonna be a triangle. It's called TR1 and it's called Spanish Moss. So what I did as I went through and I measured up what these strips, approximately what I would need for these strips. And all these white sections, I'm gonna need a quarter inch wide. And all the dark sections, I'm gonna need one inch wide. So then you just have to figure out enough length to get you coverage, so. I mean, there's mirror images here because this goes straight up the middle. So on the dark colors, we've got two four inch lengths, we've got two six inch lengths, and an eight inch in the middle, and then some little one and a half inch lengths here. And then this whole bottom part, I've got it two by seven, which is plenty. So the little pieces right here are these two small pieces over here. 
I was going to use scraps, but I decided to cut them. Then the white pieces, we have in the middle two one and a quarter by nine inches. Then we have two one and a quarter by six inches. And then on the outsides, we have one and a quarter by four and a half inches right here. And then we've got seven of these tiny little pieces here. So I cut some one and a half inch squares basically to fit these. I'm hoping it fits this C7. If it doesn't, I will figure it out. So. This is pretty easy to put together. We're just gonna cut these sections out and you're gonna put the strips together. So let me get ready. All right, so this one and this one are pretty easy. You're just putting two of these together and then we're gonna trim them. And then this is probably the biggest one we have to put together. So what do I do first? They're all strips, so it's not gonna be hard. Um, let's just do these real quick. I'll show you what those look like. So we want to take our one, our dark one inch by four inch. And we just want to make sure we have coverage here between B1 and B2. Actually B1 is the white, but it really doesn't matter. Make sure you have coverage. Put the two together. We're going to sew and we're going to iron. All right, there we go. There's one, we have coverage all the way around. So that's how you do these singles. Let's do one of these here. Um, we'll figure this one out. So we have another one by four inch that we need here. And then we need a small one for our E1. So they're having a start in the middle. So let's make sure we have coverage. And let's put our two pieces together. And then we're sewing, oops, sorry, on that line right there. All right, that's what it looks like. So we want to come over on this side and we are going to start folding it over and trimming it. So let's see, E1, E2, E3 is on this side. Let's put our thing down here, fold it over and trim it. This is calling for our six inch piece, which is right here. And I am going to line it up. It's hard to see, but right there's the bottom of our block. So I'm gonna line it up down there. So we have plenty of coverage up top. And then I'm sewing on this line right there. There we go, and you can see my fabric's off the paper, so we have plenty of coverage in here. Next is doing our E4, which is the last piece, and that's gonna be our four and a half inch. White piece is gonna go here. Which is that one. Again, right down here is the bottom of our block, so that's where I'm going to line this up. So we have plenty of coverage up top. And then I'm going to sew on this line. There we go. That's how you do the one with just the two pieces and one with multiple pieces. So I'm going to finish all of these out because that's going to be exactly the same and we'll get them trimmed and put together. Okay, here's all my sections put together. It's not hard. And they're just small pieces. It's just putting all these strips together. So um, it looks intimidating, but it really isn't that intimidating. So the way I have these laid out is section A, B, C, D, E, F. Not hard at all. And we want this to be straight. So when we put these sections together, we wanna line them up on the bottom. So put these two together and line up that bottom right here because we want that to be straight. And then our quarter inch should fall into place up here. And let's sew on the solid line. All right, here's my first two sections put together. 
We're going to do the same thing now with this section. And what you want to do is you want to iron towards the outside of the block to fill in this quarter inch gap. So we want this to be straight. So let's line up that corner, clip it, and sew on the solid line. All right, so here's our left side on. And again, I'm ironing towards this side. So now when I start adding these pieces, I want to iron towards this side. So line it up on the bottom. That's where we want our straight line. Add this one, line up the bottom, iron towards the outside. All right, here's my piece for the bottom part of this triangle. It's just one piece, I don't need it. I cut a two by seven inch piece of fabric that I am just gonna lay down here and I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. And then we can trim following the edges of our triangle. All right, so I only have one piece for the bottom part of this triangle. I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna take my two by seven inch piece that I cut for that and I'm gonna sew it a quarter of an inch along the bottom and I lock stitched where the fabric started. And then I'm just gonna iron towards the bottom. I'm gonna trim it out based on this piece. All right, let's cut right along that seam line, along the top, because that's where our seam line is. This might be an unorthodox way to do it, but that's how I'm doing it. And I'm putting the seam line right on my seam line, and you can see that the dotted line, which is our seam allowance, lines up perfectly with mine here. So I can just trim, and there we go. Yep, that's probably an unorthodox way to do it, but that's how I did it. There is our TR1 Spanish Moss order piece. All right, that's a wrap on the first week of our Dear Jane Quilt Along, and um, I am keeping my labels on each block so that I can keep track of them in the end. And I have also populated my... Um, graph on, on the EQ8 software. I showed that in the introduction video and I'm going to do a video on how I did that. It's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna put out a little video if you have EQ8 and you have the add-on on how to take pictures of your block and populate your quilt with your own blocks. So let me know what you think. Of the video, let me know if I went too much into making the blocks, if you want to see more of EQ8, if you want to see a little less of EQ8. Um, I'm a little new at this, so I'm also learning with my blocks. I'm learning with my EQ8 on how to put it together. Um, and hopefully by the end of the year, I will know a whole lot more and can share a whole lot more. But anyway, um, I really appreciate you coming along with the Dear Jane Quilt and all these pretty blocks that we're gonna make. I think next week I'm gonna go with some pink blocks. And um, I'm gonna put the blocks right here that we're doing next week. So if you wanna take a peek and maybe get ahead, um, you can do that. So thank you so much for following along. Thank you so much for watching the video. I have a blast making these and I'm gonna have a blast making this quilt and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.